What is going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Dent Digest Live Show. I hope you guys are having a fantastic Thursday. Little, little rainy here, a little crappy weather, but that's okay. That's what we do here in Maryland. At least it's not snow yet. So, so we've got a little bit of a different show tonight. Um, you know, uh, you guys know that, and I've been talking about it for a little while that I've kind of added another element to my business, which is paint protection film. It seems like a couple guys in the industry were starting to do it. And my biggest thing was, is I was pulling that stuff off to fix some of the dents and sending it to somebody else. Then that customer would call me back and say, he never called me back. So it was starting to make me look bad. And I was like, why am I doing this? Why? Let's just learn how to do it. Hire somebody to do it and do it. And it's been fantastic. Um, there's a bit of a learning curve. You know, there is a little bit of a learning curve, but it adds an element to where you get to have another conversation with your customer and kind of say, hey, we, we care about your car. You know, it isn't, hey, just give me your money for your den repair, but I actually care and I want to take care of your car and keep it long term. So it definitely has helped. It's kind of opened a whole nother door in how I approach the customer when they come to drop their car off. and. A lot of the stuff we're fixing these days is is new. So, you know, it, it's definitely a new element. It's been really, really good. Um, and the company that I've been using has been fantastic. So we're going to get into that. I don't have any PDR tools this week, so I didn't bring anything with me back from the shop. But I do want to say one thing. I'm going to talk about one of the products that I we use today. Um, and you see a lot of guys, you know, wrapping the roofs black on their car and making the roofs on their vehicles black. It always has a texture and never really looks super shiny. You know, it doesn't look really good. But they've got a product, this black, look at me, not even, you can't even see it, but you can see how shiny it is. I had a customer come in the shop today and we were doing this on, on a roof and he was like, is that vinyl? And I was like, no, it's paint protection film that's black. And he goes, I've never seen anything that, you know, shiny in that black. So I am, it, it's crazy how black and shiny and, I mean, it really, really does a nice job. So that was an element that I thought was super cool that it's not just the clear film. It's some of these colored films that, that are in the market. Um, I know like Ian Cordell started doing some stuff. He works with a company called STEC or S-Tech, they call it. Um, which has a bunch of fashion films with textures and different stuff. Um, and there's Expel out there. I know we had um, one of the guys on, and he has Expel, he uses Expel. Um, but a lot of the stuff is territorial. So when I was starting this journey, I kind of reached out and reached out to everybody. Okay. And the guy that I have on tonight is the only physical person that called me and said, Hey, what are you looking to do? And we talked for an hour and, you know, I was like, okay, I actually, this guy's okay. You know, I, I didn't feel like I was being sold. I didn't feel like I was being pushed on anything. Um, so let me get him on their company. Just we'll get into that in a minute, but let me get him on and go through it. What's up, Jamie? What's happening? How are you? We are doing well. Uh, a little on-site training as we speak. I just uh, we got done with day two today, so we got uh, one more day to go, trying to condense some of the learning uh, that I normally would do in four days into three, so not ideal, but we're trying to make it work so that there's certain elements that we can um, see in someone else's shop versus them coming to an, our environment that I can make recommendations and kind of see what they're working with because you know, when they come to my, uh, my headquarters and, and see the environment, uh, it's all controlled. So when they then go back to their own space, they kind of don't know what they need to do. And, uh, you know, from that perspective, you know, whether it's lighting, temperature, uh, being able to get the right water source. I mean, literally yesterday, uh, the, the client brought on some, he was showing us some microfibers he was going to use. They were fluorescent green. Right away, I said, 
probably not the best move. Let's take some alcohol, soak it a little bit and see if it bleeds. Because if it bleeds, that means it's going to bleed into the film. Yeah. Next thing you know, tested it out. It bled like highlighter yellow. So it's these little details that you're able to add into the mix to help them uh, in their own environment. And then the next time around, um, if you want some advanced training, which we offer consistently, um, I'll have him come to my place so that we can, you know, go over a list of things that he wants to accomplish and try and chip away at them and get over some humps. So, so how did you get into this business? Let's start with that first. How did you get into the paint protection film? And then how did you get hooked up with premium shield and just sure. kind of roll through that, the short version? Sure. I'll try and, and uh, keep it as short as possible. Uh, so the two co-owners, uh, Brett and Dave, uh, Dave's mother actually uh, used to be a member of the health club I used to manage. Um, I was the operations manager of two locations and she had tried to recruit me for like four years. And when she was moving down with her husband to be closer to the family in Massachusetts and I was up in New Hampshire, she had just pushed hard enough. I was interested, uh, gave her my resume. I was still happy with what I was doing. Next thing you know, um, entertaining the idea to be part of a startup company. Uh, and at that time, they were a distribution company, but in the midst, in the background, uh, working on uh, production, uh, creating and starting up their own product line. So next thing you know, um, I'm relocating from New Hampshire down to Massachusetts. <laughs> Uh, I'm spending six to eight months on the phone trying to learn soup to nuts about the industry that I know nothing about. I don't know anything really about cars. Um, I'm spending an extra two to three hours at the end of the day cutting kits for another company to get my understanding of what cars are, wrapping, non-wrapping, uh, the body lines, understanding year, make, model, trim level, um, and really just soaking up as much information as possible because there's so much to learn and you know fast forward to you know now i'm in my 11th year with the company um i'm the lead trainer for them uh i'm also a national sales manager where i take care of 33 or 34 states for them as far as on the sales side also some tech support um i try and create a mentorship program for the people i train and uh it's kind of like a jack of all trades because there's a lot of other stuff that I do uh, with, you know, going to trade shows and judging for the PPF competition for the window film uh, conference that we have to, you know, set, you know, lead setup guy for trade shows when we do SEMA. Um, so it's, it's a, a lot, but it's good to know all those things because PPF is so complex that um, it's good to have good resources, which is huge. And, and I recognize it, that. And it is. I mean, it's uh, you, when you originally reached out to me, you know, it was it was a full conversation of this is what mm -hmm. we have to offer. What are you looking to do? Blah, blah, blah. Real comfortable, easy conversation. And the way that you guys package things kind of with your starter pack and all that, it, it's almost a no brainer. Um, and then I started doing research on the physical company you know, what people think, get in the Facebook groups and kind of see what people are saying. And, you know, everything seemed really positive. Um, but we talked three or four times before I signed up and it was just easy conversation, no problems. Um, and let me tell you, if you guys are looking to get into this, you should really look into this and reach out to Jamie because the tech support, let me, let me tell you about this guy right here. Okay. We're, we're, Fairly new relationship here, but we were setting up my plotter. It was July the 5th. Everybody's closed. He's with his family. We can't get the plotter to work. Mikey faces or calls him. He's like, look, I'm with the family. Let me see what I can do. My plotter is based out of the UK. They don't really use them here. So he's like, I got to reach out to my UK guys. Let me see what I can do. And I was like, Mikey, just let him be. It's not a big deal. We'll figure it out tomorrow. He calls back FaceTime at a restaurant with his kids and his wife, and he's walking us through how to fix this thing on his family time. So that's the guy that I want to spend money with that has my back when we need it. Or when I call him at six o'clock at night and say, I need another 60 inch roll because we can't figure out this hood because we've just wasted a whole roll. And he goes, OK, <laughs> it'll be there in a day. 
Yeah. So, you know, in four me attempts, personally, let me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I like spending money with a company that has support and cares. And that's pretty much what you try to grow. You try to grow a network of people that can feed and help each other, you know, wherever they can. And, and I really like that, that concept. Thanks, man. I mean, I try to focus on pushing you not to spend money and to be more efficient with your, your capital so that it comes from a better, um, a better source where I want you to feel I have your best interest at heart because my goal is you're adding another revenue stream that's going to make you very profitable. But at the same time, I don't want the film just sitting there collecting dust and doing nothing for you because if I'm telling you to get this and it doesn't move, well, that's bad advice. So mm -hmm. in the end, um, that's it's a no non push sales opportunity where I'm not trying to force people's hands. I want people to know that I have their best interest at heart and that I also am very open and honest on what to expect. So, you know, this isn't a low, low cost to entry business to get in. Like it's expensive. And when I say expensive, it's not just financially, it's expensive time wise. Like you got to have the time to spend and invest to practice because you know what it's like being in the PDR business. Like it takes time. You yeah. can't learn this stuff in a couple of weeks. Like no. it can take months, if not years of nonstop practice. And there's just little things that you can't learn right off the bat. So that's our industry and we had, it's great to have the resource. So we had a model X a Tesla model X in on Tuesday, man, whoever PPF did amazing. I looked at Mikey and I said, this is where we need to go. This is where we need sure. to be because, I mean, it was just flawless. Like, if you never knew, there was it was really, really well done. Um, but, you know, it, it's a learning curve. I mean, you told us right from the go, you know, in, in, that, in that starter pack, everything that was included, you're probably going to waste almost all of that, you know. You're, yeah, at least half. Um, at and then half. I called them and said, hey, you know, um, I want some 12-inch rolls. And you're like, are you sure? You know, are you sure you want these 12 inch rolls? You <laughs> know, and I was like, I yeah, I'm doing some smaller stuff, you know, if we're at a body shop or whatever, and I need a fender, I don't want to take a huge 24 inch piece and cut it and I don't need it. Sure. So, which I liked, I was like, okay, I can appreciate that. Cause he's like, we don't sell a lot of them. And you know, um, it'll probably that roll, those two rolls will probably be there a long time, but I'd rather have but it. It's a, have there's it. a use. There's yeah. totally a use for them. And I get yeah. that. And I, and I think also understanding the business and when you're having to go and replace just one piece, I get that. But at the same time, on the sales side, the flip side of it is telling the body shop, well, you're going to have a fresh new piece with two busted old pieces where one's yeah. a partial fender and one's a partial hood and they're going to look bad because yeah. you've got used versus brands making new. So, you know, I think that's kind of what's up with the insurance company, what they're going to cover um, and how the body shop can handle moving that in with the financing. But, you know, that's, that's the flip side of it. So, but I get it. I totally get it. Um, let's get into, and I, I obviously put breaking news on the header here. Sure. Um, you know, and some of these guys watching don't know some of the guys there is some guys in here that usually don't watch so i'm sure they're ppf guys but let's get into your guys getting bought you know i saw it on facebook and i text you that night i was like oh man i hope things don't change because it's been really good so what yeah happened? i got a, i got a lot of messages that were like what wtf what's going on <laughs> are you still with the company and then i got also other ones that are like you must have got a fat paycheck huh <laughs> it's like <laughs> nah man no financial equity in that company, just sweat, just sweat equity. So, yeah. um, so really what happened was, uh, we got Monday morning. So two weeks ago, um, came in like a normal day, trying to get some orders in and roughly around like 1130, we got breaking news from owners, um, that Eastman chemical, uh, was, um, 
basically acquiring or in contract to acquire matrix films. And uh, it was kind of like an initial gut punch, you know, totally surprised, not expecting it. And then, um, you know, you're throwing a lot of information and it's still a surprise, but you know, once the dust settles, you get to meet some of the people and talk to them. Um, you now are being part of an, uh, you know, you're under this umbrella of a very large corporate water and they see a lot of value in the culture that we've created under our brand, uh, the quality of patterns and the database we've created along with the training facility that, um, in the training program that we've tried to create to really get people on board. I mean, our growth has been huge the last couple of years. So it's been honestly amazing to see that someone else so large um, really recognizes us kind of like, you know, we're a small company. It's not, um, you know, hundreds of employees. And it's, it's amazing to see something like that happen. Uh, but also at the same time, like, you know, lots of questions, what's going to happen. Um, we all still going to have the same job and, um, what are our roles and what's going to be the future. And uh, I spent unknown. literally the, yeah, it's very unknown, very unknown. And I spent literally three days talking to a ton of people, nonstop messaging, uh, phone calls, emails, um, basically being a PR specialist and just talking um, about everything. And I think a lot of people have seen other buyouts similar to this, similar to like 3M, which was the buyout of Venture Tape. Uh, and it was a totally different buyout. 3M did not buy Venture Tape to get Venture Shield. They That's bought, like a consol they bought consolidator. It was honestly for one product line, and it was the um, aluminum foil tape, uh, which is mainly used in construction. That's the main reason they bought them. It was a big, big price tag, but that's what they do. They buy markets. And in the end, they got the patent to it, and that's why they bought it. So the Venture Shield product line and that team got kind of swept under the rug and was the threat, you know, redhead stepchild. And they didn't really do a lot with it, which again was totally different with Eastman because Eastman allows these brands like Suntech, like Lumar, um, even Hooper Optic internationally because they don't do Hooper Optic in uh, the US and, and Canada. And uh, V Cool, I mean, these are brands that they allow to operate separately. Uh, and then just they get access to tools and resources to help them grow their own brands. So it's. Yeah. It's kind of a natural course for us. Um, you know, we've got great patterns, and yeah, it's a, it's they a were looking study. for for that. Looks so. like mostly the, for the patterns and software, from what he's heard. Yeah, so. yeah, but we've also done a really good job at at the training program. I mean, I'm, yeah. as you've noticed on, I mean, you've experienced it because you sent guys to me. The training program was totally different than what they are offering, and we're seeing a lot of success from it. And in the end because I have it structured the way I do, the success rate is so much better than the old school way of doing it, which was, you know, charge a nominal fee, have them for three or four days and let them go. Just, it, I, it's the old way. I had to change things up, test it out. And uh, it's, it's a proven method over the last three and a half years now. So. Yeah. I mean, the guy said it's, it's a brutal training. It's a lot, you know, you're, you're a jamming lot. a lot Correct. on them. Um, That's correct. But I mean, Mikey's doing really well. Shane's doing really well. You know, I'm learning on the on the slide just because they're kind of showing me the some tech, you know, the tricks and tips and sure. It's still a lot of learning. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's I mean, I, and I'll I'll tell you guys, there was a, a hood that I called you last week, and I was like, bro, I we we we're struggling. We are struggling sure. on this. And there's so many elements that when you start this, you know, if you're a dent guy and you're looking to get into this, there's a lot of elements that come in effect in cleanliness, temperature, you know, your lighting. solutions you're using, lighting, the microfiber towels, 
you know, perfect example. You're going to learn your that clothing, really, really fast. even your yes. clothing makes a difference. So, yes. I mean, you, you learned that real quick when you were talking about, yeah. you know, the black shirts that you have on right now versus yep. the white ones you ordered. I mean, that's, yep. it's a very complex business and artistic craft to learn and to know the inner workings and be able to have a good resource to ask those questions. And then all of a sudden they have these like aha moments like, Oh, that makes sense. It's it's to share those, those experiences and advice is huge. I mean, because that's what people need. It is. You think about it. It really makes you change the way you think in your Mm -hmm. working space. You know, we, we did a, a, it was a, when we first started, we did a white Corvette and there was a little bit of fuzz at the lower part of the bumper. And I'm like, where the hell, there's nothing here that has that. And we went back and forth and we're looking at what Mikey's wearing. I'm trying to look what's around and it was his pants. Somehow it brushed mm-hmm. up and just picked up a piece of fiber and you know, it's there, you know? So it, it, it if you're thinking about it, definitely think of your environment um you know there's a lot to that uh you know i know like brent's in here he is a super clean shop um i think he uses s tech uh film but you know it, it is all element based yeah very environmental sensitive like the environment it's very sensitive to the environment lighting plays crucial role with the temperature there's variables you can use to kind of um, counteract some of the things that uh, go up and down but if you don't have ac or you don't have heat um, you're really limiting the amount of months that you can actually work on it realistically in a enclosed environment because this is not the most ideal thing to do on a mobile side can totally be done but now you're leaving the environment that you're installing in to be variable so and body shops end, is difficult yeah i mean it's in not just body shops you're talking about also dealerships too oh, yeah. i mean they're they're not giving you the greatest space and expect you to have the best outcome ever it's just yeah unrealistic now what is your prediction for the technology of the film you know what I mean? I think I now think, I hear it. I explain it to all these people and they're like, ah, it all cracked up yellow. And I'm like, this is a little different than it used to be. You know what I mean? So the, the technology has escalated very much. So over the, I would say the course of the last five, six years um, with the urethane quality being so amazing. Now um, you're not really seeing stuff that cracks. That's high quality. Um, and that's typically what most install or high end installers are, are using is, is quality products. Um, I think that most of the time it's either coming from the urethane or the top coat and top coats way back then were so stiff. You needed a steamer in order to stretch it, to manipulate it. Uh, they're just easier to work with. You typically don't need a steamer to install. Um, they're already soft enough to stretch and manipulate. And you can typically, if you need a little heat just to kind of soften up a little bit, you can, uh, with just like a hot water solution. Um, so it's, it's a, it's a far cry, just like anything, any market, look at cell phones. I mean, they're changing literally every six to eight months. You got new technology to incorporate. So, you know, are we like the tech industry? No, but it takes a while to make those innovations and, test them out realistic so that's why every three or three or four or so years you start to see innovations in the product um i know for us we've been through so many iterations of products because we listen to our installers we need to adjust something we do um but it doesn't happen overnight and that's the challenge i mean you're talking about a i want to say maybe 12 to 14 week lead time on urethane alone i mean that's you have to be three to four months ahead just on your thing, let alone now, adhesive, top coating, testing top coats, and then live testing in the field in all the environments that you need to worry about. So it does take a lot. So now my, my question is how do you guys get the patterns for these cars? How is that done? So we have a, a, a really good access point over in Boston uh and also in the uk to get our some of our european manufacturers where we get some really high-end stuff that is just low production 
um, expensive cars. And it's like the old school way of you get transfer tape, which is basically like um, wa- larger width painter's tape, uh, mm-hmm. low tack. And what winds up happening is they'll, they'll you know, put it onto the, the panel. They use the pencils to trace and then that gets peeled off, puts on a digitizer, um, gets implemented or uploaded into the software. They add certain access points and relief cuts where necessary. Um, they'll print, test fit, and then make their adjustments um, accordingly. But you know, uh, very very precise adjustments, uh, anticipating for stretch and and manipulation. And then uh, once they make those adjustments, they'll uh, print test fit again to make sure that it's it's proper. So it's it sometimes takes a little bit longer than people would think but it's all about the quality and they've dialed it into being a very efficient process and you know our pattern database speaks for it it's yeah. half the battle is access getting access to the cars and actually yeah. knowing the cars there's lots of times i mean the cars panels like from trim levels can be the same across the board but it's mainly the bumpers that are different yeah which are a pain in the ass. Yeah. It's probably, you know, bumpers and mirrors are your, like, typically the two hardest parts of a car for the most part. And, it, and a Dodge hood. Um, <laughs> but, you know, um, it, it, the softwares have been really good. You know, the, the patterns have been really, really good. And there's some things in there that they do. It was like, uh, we're supposed to get a Mach-E and it's, it says on there, extreme stretch right through the middle of the pattern. Uh, difficult install. It will tell you right off the bat that it's difficult. Yep. Um, you know, it, it, and you can modify it is what I really liked. You know, so you can move the pattern around. You can modify if you wanted to extend something. Like my mirrors on my car had a carbon fiber cap on them. The regular pattern was way too short, way too much to stretch. So we extended sure. it and it fit, you know. So there's definitely some options there that I really, really liked. Um, I think the biggest thing is customer support, man. It's been appreciate it, man. I mean, that's what we're here for. I mean, I and I'm not tooting the, the horn, day, you guys, you know, yeah, I, everybody I know. that I've talked to that has called. I think uh you trained a group, uh, what was that? Um who were they? It's a dent company that came up there. Um, oh, you're talking about without a trace? Yes. Yep. You know, it, it's Paul and Maggie. They're a gr- great couple. I mean, they're they're solid people. Um, it was great to kind of work with them, and the fact that they got a chance to get some good hands-on experience, and then on top of that, they had already been through a training with 3M, um, and for them to adjust what they learned with one brand and find how much they could change and find more easiness into utilizing um, our product. It's sometimes like it's change. So it's certainly a different product and then giving them the precise uh, solutions to install with and the right squeegees and just making sure that they have support and kind of, you know, helping them out. I mean, it was, it was great to have them. Definitely great to have them. Yeah, I mean, it, in our industry, I, I see it. I can see it. I, you know, I've been having a lot of guys call, like, "Hey, give me some info on this." And I said, "Look, you know, Expel has a great product. They have a great product, but the customer support that I receive is is over the top. You know, and that's what I say about my business. I, I say this all the time to these guys. I said, "Look, you can do a subpar repair, okay, but if you have a really good relationship." And you take care of your customer, you're gonna surpass it. You know what I mean? As long as your customer is taken care of and they feel support, which helps them do their installs or their repairs, because sure, you're not struggling. You know what I mean? Hey, what do I gotta do to do fix this? Or what can we do to fix that? You know, so I don't know. It's uh it's been really, really good. Um you know, and like I said today, uh, this black is probably the most impressive black that I've seen in PPF. Um, it's crazy. I think the I think the colored paint protection film 
is kind of a gray area. Uh, yeah. I think a lot of the the colored products are really pushing towards um, the reason why people do vinyl uh, versus PPF. Now I get it that you know doing the black roof, maybe some B pillars, maybe mm -hmm. some accent pieces totally makes sense with some of your basic colors, but I mean, honestly, trying to do full color changes uh, with PPF, um, it's a gray it's area. Tough. I mean, I, I, I currently, me personally, just don't believe in it right now because I think that um, the products aren't really designed to do that. And on top of that, the, the competition, you're, I mean, you're really pushing towards vinyl and why people do vinyl and it's for cost effectiveness. They're yeah, changing 100%. the cosmetic look of the color of their car because of cost. Otherwise they go and repaint it mm -hmm. plain and simple. So mm -hmm. when you start pushing that envelope and now you're talking about having to do disassembly because it's still PPF and you're trying to tuck things. Uh, it's, it's a tight. more expensive product. Yeah. It's a more expensive product than vinyl is. And vinyl yeah. is very, very easy and flexible to work with, manipulate and shrink and heal its, I mean, it's, it's a totally different animal, totally yeah. different animal. So there's a lot more labor involved with the PPF side than trying to do vinyl. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, it's, it's tight. You know, if you're trying to do a fender, he lost his headphones, didn't he? He gone. Let's see if we can get him back on. You're going to have to log out and probably log back in. There we go. I there unmuted go. my act. There we go. Sorry. So, you know, it's tight. I mean, if you tried to wrap a fender in a bumper, I mean, some guys do it, but I also read that there's a lot of times for it to fail. Yeah. You know, because that stuff's moving. Correct. Against each other. So the vibration, it, it, it's going to cause, um, because of the, that friction, it can potentially cause the film to release. That's when you're needing to use adhesive promoter in those instances. And again, <clears throat> When you're trying to wrap a lot of those things and tuck so you don't see anything, now you have to take panels off. Um, on a, again, I think there there's a place for it, but currently I haven't seen a product yet that um, really could could be used for a full color change properly mm -hmm. on the PPF side. And I, I got some samples today. I got the your tint for headlight film. Yeah, the smoke film is like literally just regular PPF, but it's got a 35% transmission uh, tint to it. So it's installs just like regular clear, except you get that cosmetic look of looking a little different on the headlights, but you don't lose the functionality of those LEDs, which is nice. Now, have you tried this on a piece of chrome, like a chrome trim piece? That I haven't done. Uh, usually you're only doing the smoke on actually something clear like a headlight or a taillight. Okay. Okay. Um, most people don't want film on chrome because they like the look of chrome. And if you yeah. were to actually put gloss PPF on chrome, there's like this slight little haziness to it that does, doesn't make it as shiny. I don't know why. Um, so we just typically in our industry, we just, we opt to say we don't, we don't cover chrome. Okay. And then I got some matte, some satin, mm -hmm. the matte film. So I've got a Tesla plaid coming in. So he wants it in that. So we'll see. You know, we'll what see color? What, uh, what color Tesla? It's like the dark grayish blue color that they have. Okay, it's so a dark color. Yeah, the darker the color, the better the the satin or matte fi finishes look. I find that it's a waste of time putting it on white. You can't really tell, yeah. but you know, yeah. the customer's gonna pay. They say, so it's fine. You know. <laughs> um, now, one thing that I did see in some of the pattern stuff, and I don't know what you do, a lot of the emblems, do you remove a lot of emblems or do you try to make the plot work with those emblems? I know like we did a Silverado Fender Forward mm -hmm. and it told you in there, you know, due to alignment of emblem, remove emblem to install film or whatever it said in there. What do you usually do? What's your common practice? My common practice is if you can remove the emblem, do it. It's going to lead to a better fitment and better look, and you don't have to worry about uh, lines from a cutout matching up properly, which you'll see. 
uh, if you look closely, it's most emblems and badges are typically held on with double-sided adhesive tape. You can buy that readily and salvage the emblem, put some new tape on there and get it on and it looks seamless. And that is the, like the new standard and it's moving towards that direction, which is great because the whole goal is to make the film look like it's not there. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to do. I mean, nothing's perfect, but um, most of those emblems are pretty easy to take off. Most, most of them. Yeah. Um, what is your warranty for the film? Some of these guys. So the warranty, not a guarantee, but a warranty is a lifetime warranty of yellowing, peeling and cracking. Okay. And you know, it's a selling tool. It, the, the goal is that we want you to feel confident that from a warranty perspective, we got your back. Yeah. You know, uh, you can't guarantee these customers are going to look through the care instructions and take care of it the way it's supposed to. It's never going to happen. But, you know, if you can stay in contact with a customer and give them the proper care instructions and give them some good guidance, usually they'll take care of it. Um, but in the end, if something abnormal happens, we got your back. You know, that's not your yeah. fault. It's our fault. I mean, it happens. You know, it's... it happens. It happens. And They're not paying you for the product. The product is the byproduct of your labor. They yeah. can all buy film online from wherever source, but they don't know how to install it. It's not a DIY product. They're paying you for your expertise to install this stuff. It's just like hiring a contractor to get uh, a kitchen redone or your sure. bathroom redone. You know, you can buy all those materials at Lowe's or Home Depot. You can YouTube the crap out of that if you want. But that doesn't mean you know what you're doing. No. It'll take you forever. You hire yeah. an expert. And that's what you're doing when you're in this industry is you're the expert in being able to have that knowledge to install the product at ease and hopefully make it look like it's not there from a few feet away. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's. It's definitely a selling point, you know, like when you're trying to explain it to your customer, people still, it's kind of like dent repair was for a long time. What do you mean you can fix that dent without, without painting it? Well, I can do this, you know, um, now I'm having, I feel like I'm 20 years. Like I took a back to the future with paintless dent repair with PPF. Cause I'm like, yeah, you know, it's, it's clear bra. And they're like, what, is, what, what are you talking about? You know, like sure. my web guy on my website, we did paint protection film PPF. I was like, you need to add clear bra on there too. And he's like, why? They they get the point. I'm like, trust me. <laughs> All these people, they don't they don't get it. You know what I mean? So you have to explain sure. it. And for me personally, I've got an easy sell for them because I say, look, you know, the front of my truck's done. And I I'm like, I hit a piece of furniture at 60 miles an hour. It dented the bumper of a Silverado, which is a thick metal bumper. Yep. And I peeled the film off and it the paint was fine. Hmm. That's my sell. Every time I get these guys, I'm like, look, trust me, I'm a true believer in this stuff. Even before we started installing it. Sure. It works. This is, I'm telling you, it works. Um, you know, today I had a first time I, I had a customer that I've been doing his um, vehicle with dent repairs for years. And he's got a bunch of cars and he come, he came by today. This front bumper was covered in rock chips. I mean, yep. it's just blasted. It's black. And I was like, let's see. You know, it's got the little white marks. Let's just see what a piece of scrap looks like down there. And I cut a little piece of scrap and stick it down there. And uh, it looked like hell, you know. Um, so he was over. The, he drove straight over to the body shop. And he's getting the bumper repainted. And then he's like, I'll come see you in 30 days. I won't drive it. I'm like, okay. You know, so I don't know. It's. Uh, I think it's still a learning product. I think a lot of these people still have to learn what it is and educate and educate and educate and educate. Sure. So try being in my position. They ask me, you know, I'm talking to, to some random Joe Schmo <laughs> on a plane or something They're like, what do you do? And I say, I work for a urethane manufacturer. Well, what do you sell? It's kind of hard to describe it. Yeah. Um, so honestly, the easiest reference I use is electronics. I mean, the screen protectors, it's the same industry. It's the same product. Right. That's a great And so idea. that's usually my first reference because most of them can relate to that because a lot of people know what screen protectors are. But, you know, there's other there's other industries we sell into. It's not just automotive. And um, it's a very versatile product. And uh, automotive is just one of our bigger, bigger industries. But we're starting to get into marine. 
Um, I'm already in the bicycle market. We're already in aerospace and the airline market. So there's a lot of growth potential and surfaces you can protect because it's not just paint protection film. It's a surface protection film. Yeah. It's there to, to help prevent some of your common damage. Take the brunt of it. Now, Josh says, is it car wash safe or do you have to detail it? I mean, it's, I haven't, everything I have here is PPF and we wash along, you know, it's, it's. Yeah. I mean, I would say amazing. I wouldn't take it to your normal car wash because a lot of those guys are low wage and will hit the power washer on the edges. Um, so usually if you're going to take it to a car wash, I would do a touchless. That's probably your best recommendation. Mm. Otherwise, I'd just take it to a detailer who can give you a maintenance wash, which will be more efficient. will understand how to treat the film uh, because it needs to be washed and waxed properly. Uh, unless you put some type of coating or sealant on there, a little bit easier to maintain. Uh, but yeah, your normal, what I call them is scrub and scratch. Uh, <laughs> those are <laughs> your car washes that, again, <laughs> they will destroy your paint and you don't yeah. realize it and they'll destroy your film. And it's not like the film won't do its job, but a lot of that stuff is so powerful. And when they take that power washer, you know, a, an inch or so from the edge, nothing's going to last wow. nothing. Even your hand will get damaged. So it's, you know, trying to set those expectations, be realistic. Um, the other thing you guys kind of got into was chemicals. So you got into some kind sure. of a spray and shine and then a sealant. And I bought a bunch. We do kind of, I, I should have brought some with me, but we uh, do a I little mean, like, gift bag for our, my customers. Sure. Every time they come, they get a little premium shield microfiber and a quick detailer and, and a car soap. Um, the quick detailer smells, if you like vinegar, you're going to love it. Smells like vinegar, but it is by far, <laughs> it is badass is what it is. Um, it, it, it don't plan on it. You're going to, you know, it's, it's not going to last a long time, but when it's on there, it's super slick. Mm -hmm. You hit bugs, you can wipe it off, you know, super easy. Um, and I have customers that are physically that I'm giving them the little bottle. They, you know, we wipe the whole truck down or car down when it's delivered. I give them the little bottle and like the, the little thank you bag and they come back and buy more. And I'm like, That's the goal, man. I, I wasn't expecting to sell this stuff. You know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. it's, you know, so it's the other thing we do is we seal it with your sealer. I don't know if you want to go into that after we do the install, wipe it with your sealant and then deliver it. Do you want to get into that a little bit? Well, all you're trying to do is really just seal the film because it's pores. So kind of like your skin. You know, if you you don't take care of it, you don't take a shower, yeah, you're going to smell, you're going to be dingy. So, you know, if you're washing the car and the film is porous, you want to seal those pores, kind of lock them in, and that's what the sealant's for. The sealant's good for like a four to six months. And then anytime you kind of wash the car, get it clean, that's what the whole point of the quick deal tailor is because – you know, you're rinsing off the surface, add that quick detailer to add a, like a little extra, it's almost like a topper, but you know, it's temporary. And, uh, in the end, it's, it's going to help keep that surface slick from all the elements while the rest of the stuff underneath is going to take the brunt of the damage as you continue to go upon, you know, go upon your way and, um, do your thing and use your daily driver. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's for us to be able to recommend, the proper products we've tested on the film so that Joe Schmo can order chemical guys or this brand or that brand. Good luck for us knowing what chemicals are in there. Cause we used yeah. to have this warranty card with care instructions on it that said no synthetic, uh, use a synthetic wax with no carnauba, no dyes. Good luck. Get good luck getting the ingredients on any of these chemicals. Yeah. Especially at the store. And uh, a lot of people just go and do their own thing. So at least we have the proper products with the brand associated with it because we've already done our own testing and we know they work. Um, and, you know, I think that at the end of the day, it's all about trying to maintain it. You know, if they don't take it, take care of it, it's not going to stay clean. That's just reality. 
And Josh is asking, how does it hold up to bug damage if you can't wash it right away? It, it it'll dry on there. You know, it'll be like not as hard as is on your paint. Um, but a lot of times you can just wash the car or quick detail it and it'll wipe off. Um, and we have bug remover. You know, you and that food. bug remover is the baddest bug remover ever made. Um, I had the one of the guys from Chemical Guys from the detail garage and they sell they sold, you know, they sell bug and tar remover. Sure. Didn't touch it. It did not touch it. It it works. You can literally spray that bug and tar remover on there, walk away, come back. I mean, I wouldn't walk away for half an hour, but come back in a couple minutes and you can see it running off of the front of the truck. You barely sure. even have to to rub it. So it's good stuff, man. It's you know yeah and again you know and it's not saying that all bugs are going to get you know it's going to hold up to all bugs there's some really harsh ones like love bugs you kind of see some of those in the south uh, like love florida bugs. and texas and those little fuckers are so acidic <laughs> that they burn through paint clear coat i mean i've seen some of those guys that just they're driving and they don't have film but their front bumpers covered covered in love bugs Love and there's, and there's two seasons every year for that stuff. So there's only so much you can kind of say and guarantee. Um, will it hold up? Yes. Uh, it will certainly prevent the, the bugs from etching into your clear coat, which is half the battle. Um, and in the end, like if you didn't have any film on there, yeah, those love bugs will destroy your clear coat and you can polish. But again, you only have so many layers, then you'd have to add, you know, more layers to it. So that's just more hard labor. In the, in the end, the film's going to do its job. And a lot of people actually call it love bug film. <laughs> it's that's the season funny. that people will get it. So the other really good usage that we just did one, you know, I saw it online and I was like, okay, that makes sense. Older headlights mm -hmm. that real hazy. Uh, so we had one, you know, to where you would, wet sand and buff them some guys wet sand them and buff them and then paint clear coat them again but if you put the paint protection film like shane's headlights were wrecked and you guys put the paint protection film on it up there in boston and they look brand new well think about it i mean that those headlight covers themselves are typically plastic so that's why you're able to polish it and kind of get it looking new but usually that it always film shades back yeah, I mean, it, it, it's always going to get back to being faded. So with the film, the film prevents it from fading, getting damaged. And that's just, it's a nice benefit. The only mm -hmm. the only flip side with headlights is like technically headlights, putting film on it, any kind of film is illegal. You're mm -hmm. not supposed to put anything on your headlights. But, you know, reality is no cop is going to pull you over because they can tell you have a clear paint protection film <laughs> because <laughs> it's impossible. So at the end of the day, um, yes, it's a gray area. Um, there's a few cars that are out there that it is high risk where it's like a 50% chance you're actually going to pull the, coat, the clear coat off the headlight. Yeah. Um, and that circles around Porsche. Uh, sorry, Porsche. Um, you know, I think it's the one of the 911s and the Boxster specifically um, where it's like, like a 50 50 shot you do have the potential yeah. if you if you have to reposition that headlight film um you could potentially pull the clear coat and there's no coming back from that that's a headlight you have to replace which yeah. sucks yeah so. yeah um you know it, it's it's and i've been using it for for paintless you know sure. so we have i do a ton of porsche underside of the hoods are painted Tesla underside of the hood painted no liner. So what do you do? You're going to scratch it up? No, you're going to pick this up. You know, we cut it into little squares or whatever we, you know, do to test our plotter once in a while or cut it with a pair of scissors and peel a little piece off and stick it up there and you can push. And a lot of times you don't push through it. Um, but it, it's been working really well for that. You know, I'm sure. using it on some different stuff, uh, you know, some tool stuff, putting it on the end of the tools, trying to push to see if it, if it'll really pierce through how long it takes. Um, and uh, just simple door edge guards. Simple. They take literally one to two minutes per door and I install them dry. They're, they're very easy to do. 
very easy to do. I think there's just so many uses uh, that people just don't realize how um, it can be implemented in some of the ways that they uh, uh, could involve it into their business. Um, heck, I, I play tennis. I put some on my racket as a racket guard, <laughs> like, you know, just on the sides. Cause when I go for a deep ball and I, my racket slides on the, on the, the court, yeah, it's going to eventually damage the, the paint on it and could chip it and crack it. So it's a, in my opinion, it's a surface protection film has multiple applications and it's a matter of um, how it's sold and marketed and just it's, it works, which is half the battle. You know, you can have all these products that people try and sell, but eh, are they effective or work. Eh, it's a toss. This, this, this stuff actually works. It takes the brunt of it. So it's good. Yeah. And I see mountain bikes are a big thing. I keep seeing online. Yep. So, and you guys have yeah. a pretty good little uh, motorcycle pattern software stuff in there too i see we do motorcycles dabbling. yep we do have a database for motorcycles most of our guys that are getting the motorcycles actually um it's from our uk database uh or our uk team um the the access there is much better than the access here uh in the u.s just with our relationships we just don't have as good a relationships here as they do there um but you know it's nice to have i think that there's maybe a handful of brands that it's truly valuable to put it on because there's more paint than there is plastic. And when you're dealing with like a BMW tank or a Harley Davidson or a Buell or an Indian, like those are their bikes that are expensive, but also have panels that are painted that are worth covering. Mm -hmm. And in the end, it actually takes you the same amount of time, but less film to do like a normal bra on a car as to do a motorcycle. And it's just because there's so many little pieces, it's more time consumption than anything. So. Yeah. Anything else you want to go over here? Uh, I mean, I think we've covered a lot of stuff. Um, you know, I've been happy to be able to have a better understanding of, of the PDR world. And it's so synergistic with you guys because you have a better understanding of a craft and an, uh, the artistic advantage of learning something and spending years at like bettering that craft, which is what people pay you for is your, your years of experience um, to be able to do it efficiently and understand that it doesn't happen overnight. And that's a hard thing for me to try and portray and explain to people when they're inquiring about adding the service to their profit center uh, when they're used to doing automotive detailing or window tinting or vinyl um, or other services. And, you know, it's an honest conversation and they're just looking to spend a short amount of money, add the service, and then boom, think they're going to be off and running. And it's anything but that, anything but that. It is a grind. And it's, it's, it's a learning even for me. You know, I'm a 20-year yep. paintless den repair tech brought on ppf and it's a straight learning for me to pricing sure it, it's it's trying to price it correctly you know it, it's kind of like me asking you to price a dent repair sure like, I, don't, I don't have a clue you know there's so many variables well there's a bunch of variables in this too so sure you kind of learn on the run and try to stay in your market share of competition of where the pricing is, you know, so you're not completely blowing yourself out of the water, but you're not the cheap guy. Correct. I like um, being able to charge a reasonable charge. I don't think if you, if you overcharge, I get it, make good money. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I, I think people should be paid for what they're worth. I also don't think you need to undercut uh, and cheap in the market, which then winds up being, you know, race to the bottom. I'm not for that. Uh, and then two, I think overcharging is, I'm sorry, just not good for the market and not good for the consumer. Because at the yeah. end of the day, we maybe have eight to 10% penetration rate in the, in the new car market. There's so many other consumers that are just not interested in doing this because it's too expensive for their budget. Yeah. And I get it. But, you know, there's also a reasonable fee too. You know, there's, there's good pricing and then there's overpricing and underpricing. 
and um, you know, through coaching and trying to give you good ideas and adding value. And the goal is to make a minimum, minimum of 200 to $400 per hour. Good luck making that kind of money in some of these other businesses. It's, mm-hmm. I, I try and t- I tell people it's like lawyer money. I mean, yeah. it's a great living. And if you can make that kind of money, that's something that you can make a living off of for years. And that's my goal. It's, it's been good. I mean, I, I'm happy, you know, there's, there's been some learning curves and stuff you just don't know. You know what I mean? Sure. I looked at this thing. I said to my wife a, c- a couple weeks ago, I was like, we didn't know. We got to know business. We didn't know. You know what I mean? You're, you're just kind of diving in and you gave us a direction and, and gave us an idea and some of that other stuff, you just have to figure out mm-hmm. on your own. You just figuring it out what works for you, what doesn't work for you, you know? Um, but no, it's, it's, and if you guys are interested in your, your paintless dent guys or, or using another company, I'm telling you, and I, I don't know if it's because this is the only film that I've used, but it doesn't matter. The customer service, man, it's been fantastic. You know, with Thanks. me being in Maryland and you being in Boston, two days, the film's at the house. It, it's been, it's been really, really good. So. My pleasure, man. Glad to have you guys on board. Um, you know, it's, it's tough, definitely a learning curve and you've been open to listen and ask me questions as much as you can. And I'm willing to give you as much advice, advice as I can. And, uh, you know, there's so much stuff in this noggin of mine that, you know, as long as people are willing to listen to the diarrhea of ideas I've got, um, I'll continue to, to share it with people and help them, you know, grow their businesses and help them make money. That's always my goal. And it, 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 it is because I think it was like Wednesday last week. And I try not to call this guy. I try to, I'm a problem solver. I try to figure this shit out on my own. But it gets to a point to when I was looking at Mikey and I look at Shane and both of them are ready to quit. And there's a trash can over there full of film. And I was like, dude, I don't, we got a real problem. And it's the hey. first time we've called him the whole time we like really had a major issue. Yep. And Can you stop the mic? No problem. You know, I was like, look, dude, he, he's about to quit. We got $1,000 worth of film on the floor, and we still need to get this truck done by tomorrow. So yeah. help us out here. So I coached him through it, told him what he should be doing, told him what I thought was going on. And then I offered my services. I could do a, a FaceTime with him if he wanted to during the install. But like I said, take a break, walk away from it for a little bit, and then cooler heads would prevail. Try I the Goal was to keep the hood on the car, not off the car, <laughs> and kind of coach him through the process of why I recommended certain things and why certain things were happening. And yeah. so it, what I think it only took two more attempts. Yeah. Um, so you know, it's all about just sometimes talking it through with someone else to understand that, like, oh, this is the best strategy. I've had guys go through a whole roll just on one. Just on one hood. We, we did. That's we did. We did. That, I mean, that's that is the type of stuff that great installers come from, because they're willing to burn through a thousand dollars in material to get the job done right. Not just all right. Well, I'm just gonna send it anyways because it's on. And that's the quality we look for. That's the quality I try and push my guys to strive for because. In the end, it's going to speed up your learning curve, and you're going to be doing phenomenal installs faster than the guys that have been doing it for 15 years. They're still doing the same quality. Yeah. You know, the, it's a it's a new time right now. There are a lot more hungry people that are coming into the business, and it's an exciting time. A lot of hungry new people. And if you guys have any questions, just call me. Reach out on Facebook, whatever. You know, most of you guys know how to get a hold of me. Just ask questions. I had a tech call. Don Cavanaugh called and was like, Hey, I'm interested in this. I know we, you know, I've heard of expel. I've never heard of your company, but you always speak so highly. And I'm like, just telling you, watch this tonight. Call me. I'll explain it. You know, I'm, I'm easy. You know what I mean? Just, it's all about the customer experience for me. I want to be treated just like how I'm treating my customers. So it's, it's sure. a great dude. I appreciate it. You have a great night. You're in North Carolina. North Carolina, yeah, Asheville right now. Yeah, it's uh, 
It's beautiful. I had some rain the other day, but um, yeah, I got one more day here. Here with one of my distributors trying to kind of show them the ropes on how I'll run an on-site training, kind of give them my spiel and how I run the program because um, they're going to be an extension of me in, in Tennessee, which is nice because they get they got a good central location to cover several states to help me. Um, and that's half the battle is I can, I'm only one person. So it's, uh, it's more feet on the street, more people that I have trust with that are going to help us promote, you know, the, the expectations, um, the standards and just the quality and service that I try and provide to everyone. You know, you've tried to call and I'll, I'll take the call. I might be in the middle of something, but, uh, you know, uh, I'll, if it's important, I'll take the call. And if I got to call you back, I'll tell you, I'll call you back. Um, I want and everyone. Shane to said it. Around. Yeah. Shane said he's close to what your phone does. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, he's on the phone the whole time. He's teaching. He's like doing this. He's texting. He's sending pictures. He's doing this. He's like, he's close to what your phone does. He's like, I'm like, yeah, you know, it's part of the job, dude. It is what it yeah. is. Yeah. And that's the thing is it's a business to business relationship instead of business to um, consumer where there definitely should be a separation to, between the consumer and the business. Um, but business to business, your business can sometimes rely on my advice or my expertise or something I need to help you out with. And if you're working, then I'm working. So yeah. if there's something that you need and I can get it for you, um, I'm going to do it. And it could be just as simple as, uh, my cut code didn't work. I literally can take my phone or go on my computer, look it up on Google Docs, boom, grab it, text it to you, done. It might take five or 10 minutes, but it's the least I can do to try and help you, you know, finish whatever you're doing. Yeah. How can people find you? Um, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, you can reach out to me on my cell phone, email. I respond by everything. Um, um, I'm Jamie at premium shield.com J A M I E. Uh, and you can call myself, man, uh, 603-231-9739. And then if you guys feel more comfortable going through Ryan, reach out to him. And then uh, he can share my info and uh, I give you a full confidence of sharing my contact info with people if they're interested. And uh, I'm here for advice. There is no pressure. If you guys just want to yeah. ask me questions, I don't care what film you're using. Even if you just want to know what kind of solutions I recommend or tools or whatever. Um, I talk to so many people that I don't even sell to that it's just about networking with people and trying to help um, move the needle for, for everyone. And it is. It's it's funny because when you called for me, when you called me, I was like, I don't even remember filling anything out online. I was like, <laughs> I filled out so much shit for every company out there, and I was like, okay, you know, when you we were talking, you sent me the email, and I'm like, all right, I got to look this company up because I don't even remember filling the form out. But sure. you know, there was a local guy, uh, Brian Rice. He uses your product over at uh, Polisher Perfection, so I knew he's pretty picky with his products. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I knew it was a, a good product, so it, it's been great, man. Hopefully, uh, you know, everything works out with the, with the merger and, and, and the growth you. of the company. Um, uh, you do a great job, man. I, I appreciate it. I'm excited. Um, I really am. I think there's a lot of great opportunity from everything I've heard from them. Uh, good vibes. And, uh, I'm not going anywhere, man. Uh, I'm a lifer. This is, I started on this path. Um, I'm on my 11th year now. Uh, and I love what I do, man. I love what I do. All right, brother. We'll have a fantastic night. You too. You guys if you need anything, call me. <laughs> oh, you know, I will, you know, I'm ready. I feel like I just said to my wife, I was like, I think we've ordered film like every single week, you know, and just my thing is I don't have the space at the shop. So sure. You're two days out. Why? I'd rather let it sit on your shelf than in my shop. So, <laughs> you know, um, but no, man, it's been great. You guys have a fantastic night. Thanks for watching. If you got any questions, reach out. Thank you everyone you for listening. Week. It was a pleasure. See you guys.